Will VR gaming ever become mainstream? This is a question that I see pop up on a regular basis. Obviously I can't predict the future, so this video is going to be heavy on speculation, but I think the answer depends on a number of factors. So let's go over those and I'll share my thoughts on what VR needs to really get gamers to strap on a headset. First, let's define mainstream. I'm not talking about every man, woman and his grandma. I'm talking about gamers. People who own a gaming PC or a console People who buy and play video games on a regular basis. These are the people that already have the computer or console to potentially run VR games. They just need to buy the headset. Virtual reality has been a more mainstream product for around seven years now. I remember back in the earlier days, people were predicting that in a few years, almost every game would have some sort of VR support. That clearly hasn't happened, so why? There are two main things to look at. The hardware, i.e. the VR headsets, and then the software, so the games available for people to actually play. The headsets have definitely improved over the years. My first VR headset was an OG Oculus Rift. It wasn't massively comfortable, and the screen was way too low resolution, but the immersion that VR brings to gaming was enough to sell me on it. And now I've got a Valve Index, which whilst getting a bit long in the tooth, is still perfectly serviceable. It might be heavy, but it's comfortable, and the resolution and field of view are good enough that I don't really think about them when I'm playing. But the index is expensive, and it requires you to set up base stations in your room. I personally have them in a light stands, so that I can move my setup around and put them away when I'm done. The Oculus Quest is significantly cheaper, and can be used as a standalone. And because of that, it's the highest selling headset currently on the market. So price and ease of use is clearly a massive factor. The Quest isn't very comfortable out of the box though, and it needs aftermarket head straps to make it more bearable after about 30 to 40 minutes of use. The Quest is very easy to use standalone. You put on the headset, and once you've set up your boundary, you can be gaming within seconds. The problem is, it isn't really powerful enough to give the sort of games that mainstream gamers who have a good PC or console are used to. I'll come back to games shortly. Then you've got the PSVR 2 which released this year. This is more expensive than the Quest, and it needs a PS5, but obviously if you've already got a PS5, then you only have to buy the headset. There are literally tens of millions of PS5 sold worldwide, so there's potentially a very large player base for it already. There are loads more PC specific headsets available, but I'd say that these are the main three that non-VR gamers know about. So why aren't they rushing out to buy one of them? I think the most important part is the price. Price is very important, this is why the Quest is so popular. I think the PSVR 2 being more expensive compared to the PS5 is a sticking point. To many people, it's an accessory, and whilst people do spend a lot of money on things like racing wheels and seats, unless there are multiple incredible games that they actually want to play, it's hard to justify the cost. I think the second most important thing is comfort. If the headset isn't comfortable, then people aren't going to want to use it, and it seems to be surprisingly hard for these companies to make a headset that's comfortable for most people. Like I already mentioned, I think the Quest is particularly bad for this. A lot of people swear by the Halo design on the PSVR 2 because the weight of the headset sits on top of your head, so the front with the screens inside isn't actually putting pressure on your face. The new big screen beyond literally uses a custom faceplate just for your face shape. You have to use an iPhone to scan your face and then it's 3D printed. The Beyond is also by far the smallest, lightest headset out there, but it's $1000 just for the headset with no base stations, controllers or built in audio. Ultimately, this is what it needs to become though, something small, light, with as little pressure on the face as possible. Something that you can slip on your face and you barely notice it's there and you can wear it for hours. We're not there yet, but this is gradually improving with time. Ease of use is also critical. The Quest is an easy win here. You turn it on, slip it over your head and you're sorted. It's wireless so you can take it to any room and the tracking and room setup is really easy to use. Using the Quest on a PC can be more problematic. You either need to buy a separate cable, or get a good router and set up wireless, whereas with the PSVR 2, it comes out of the box fully ready to use. You just have to plug in the single USB-C cable to the front of the PS5, and you're good to go. I think this is one of the big reasons why PC will always be more niche compared to console or standalone VR, because the barrier to entry for PC VR is just so much higher and more complex. If you want to get a good PC, trying to figure out the spec that you need, the cost of the PC, setting up a Quest or setting up base stations in SteamVR are all way more money as well as effort for the mainstream gamer. So the hardware needs to be as cheap as possible. I personally feel like the $300 to $400 is a sweet spot. It needs to be as easy to use as possible with minimal setup and standalone and consoles are the most realistic way for VR to fully penetrate the mainstream non-VR gamers. But for me personally, the single most important part of this and the main reason why VR isn't as big as we'd like it to be, is the games. There's not much point spending hundreds of dollars on a VR headset if you've got nothing to play on it. 
Now I know what some people are thinking, we've got loads of games already and this is true. I would say that there are well over 100 good VR games worth playing and I will make an updated list of those in a video soon. But the problem is, most of them are relatively short, shallow experiences that are made by very small studios who generally don't have massive amounts of development experience. We're still missing a nice stream of high quality, high profile games to keep people playing VR and to entice new people to join us in the future. If you're a non-VR gamer who still enjoys playing regular games on a monitor, then what games are there to get you to even think about buying a VR headset? Let's look at this year for example. Just over 6 months in, and we've had Final Fantasy 16, Diablo 4, Amnesia the Bunker, Street Fighter 6, System Shock Remake, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Resident Evil 4 Remake, Dead Space Remake, Marvel Midnight Suns, Atomic Heart, and Hogwarts Legacy. Just to name some of the bigger games, not including the great indie releases. So what about VR games? The biggest VR only release is Horizon Call of the Mountain. We've had a VR mode added to Resident Evil 8, a game that released two years ago that most people who want to play that game already have. You've got VR support for Gran Turismo 7. These are the ones that people outside of VR are going to know about, enough to care. And only one of those is VR only, and not just VR support for an older existing game. We have had some great games released like Vertigo 2, Saints and Sinners 2 and Propagation Paradise Hotel, but ultimately if you're not inside the VR bubble, these games aren't really going to get your attention. I think this is the main problem that VR gaming needs to solve, to truly attract the mainstream. When you have a steady stream of high profile, high quality AAA and indie games, why would you bother with VR? VR needs several high profile VR games of known IPs that can only play with a VR headset. Ports and VR modes help, and they're a good way to get these sorts of games into VR without making a game from scratch. But to the masses, who maybe haven't even tried VR yet, getting a headset to play the same game again isn't a big enough reason to justify the cost. Half-Life Alyx is the biggest profile game that really moved the needle. I remember when it was released, streamers and other online gamers said that they would buy an index just so that they could play Half-Life Alyx. And some of those still occasionally stream VR stuff, but they still mostly play non-VR games simply because there isn't enough high quality games that the majority of gamers care about. The Quest's lack of power is also an issue. Whilst it's the most popular headset, Meta themselves have said that they have a problem with player attention. In other words, most headsets are sat in a cupboard gathering dust because once the wow factor dies down and they've played the biggest games on the platform, they're left with a lot more basic, small indie games that don't look that appealing. Since Resident Evil 4, there hasn't really been any big high profile games for the quest, and obviously Resident Evil 4 is over 15 years old at this point. They've got Asgard's Wrath 2 coming, but visually it looks very underwhelming compared to the first game, and most non-VR gamers don't even know or care about Asgard's Wrath anyway. Assassin's Creed is getting a VR game for the quest, and we've only seen a pre-rendered trailer, so it'll be interesting to see how that one looks when it's actually in-game. But the reality is the Quest 2 is massively underpowered, even just for regular gaming, let alone VR which requires two images to be rendered, at a higher frame rate and resolution, and it's a massive limiting factor to what VR game developers can make. The Quest 3 is coming and will have twice the power, which is definitely going to help massively, but the Quest 2 still needs to be supported for at least a couple more years, so I don't expect to see any Quest 3 exclusives anytime soon. In my opinion, and this is obviously just my opinion, I don't think it matters how easy to use, cheap and comfortable the Quest gets if it can't produce the sort of games most gamers want to play. It is a cheaper PC headset though, which is important. So that leaves us with PC and PSVR 2. PC is like I mentioned before the most expensive and hardest to get into, but you have got millions of people around the world who have already got VR ready gaming PCs. The problem is that the player base isn't big enough for large gaming studios to invest millions of dollars into bigger AAA VR games. So unless someone like Meta and Sony are going to subsidise these games then PC VR is always going to be niche with most people using VR for simulator racing and flying games, playing VR mods and then occasionally VR only games that release. Meta is done with PC and they're fully focused on the quest. Meta in all honesty aren't really focused on games, they're making fun some games to sell headsets but the long goal is to create the metaverse and we're definitely going to see them shift more and more into mixed reality stuff and eventually AR. Valve are a disappointment. They have actually done a lot for VR over the years. They designed the base stations and tracking system for the OG Vive and obviously they've made their own headset with the Index. They released the lab for free in the early days of VR to give people something to play on the headsets and as a demonstration of what VR can do for developers. And the best one is Half-Life Alyx. Still the most popular and well-known VR game so far and it's the one most people refer to when you talk about the best VR games available. But they could do so much more. Valve owns Steam, which is a money printing machine, 
So they have an almost unlimited amount of money. And whilst I don't think they're done with VR, I think they probably are working on a VR game and a replacement for the Index. Releasing one AAA game every five or so years isn't enough. They could do the same thing Meta and Sony do and reach out to developers to get them to make VR games for Steam to boost the overall VR gaming industry and get more people excited to buy a VR headset. But they aren't doing this as far as we know. This leaves us with the PSVR 2 and Sony because Microsoft and Nintendo aren't interested in VR right now. The PSVR 1 has some of the best VR games like Blood and Truth, Astro Bot and Wipeout. And the PSVR 1 did sell over 6 million units. The PSVR 2 has only been released for a few months and as already mentioned, some of the biggest VR games that released this year are all on PSVR 2. But is it enough? Horizon Call of the Mountain looks interesting but it seems that they went too heavy on the climbing with not enough focus on combat and exploration. Sony have got so many incredible IPs, it would be massive for VR if they've already got a few VR only games in development from some of their big studios. Games like God of War, a Last of Us spin-off, I think bringing back Killzone as a VR only game could get some real hype in the gaming industry. Only time will tell though what Sony have got up the sleeve. They actually recently had a big E3 style event about a month ago and VR was such a tiny part of it, I couldn't help but disappointed. They clearly didn't have anything to show, even just a little teaser for a big VR game that's in development would have gone a long way. VR ports or hybrid VR games will also help. It bolsters up the library, giving people more of a reason to own and use a headset, but in my opinion it's the VR only games based on big IPs that are going to shift headsets. Because if people can still play a game out of VR, even though we all know how much VR changes the game up, people on the fence still won't jump aboard. To wrap this up and give an answer to the title of this video, I'm not actually sure if VR will ever become more than a niche. There are other factors as well, like how isolating VR can be to the outside world. How lazy people are, people after a long day at work, don't want to have to move around. They would much rather just sit back with a gamepad and twiddle their thumbs. The games are the most important, and depending on what Sony and Meta do in the future, and the games that they fund, will really make a difference to VR adoption. Only time will tell on this one, and I think it will be a few years yet before we start to get the answers. Let me know what you think about this. Do you think VR will ever be in most gamers' hands and that the majority of games released will have VR support or be VR only? As always, a massive thanks to my patrons and YouTube members. Your support keeps the channel going and helps me keep making videos like this.